Welcome to Online Algebra 2. This is section 11-4, Conditional Probability. So our objective for this section is to find conditional probabilities and to use tables and tree diagrams to help determine conditional probabilities. And conditional probability exists when two events are dependent, one depends on the other. In fact, what we're talking about here is that the probability of an, event, of an event B will occur given that event A has already happened. That's what is called conditional probability. So what we're saying is that something has to happen first. I'm telling you it happens first. What's the probability that this other thing happens? And we write the conditional probability of event B given event A like this. So we say probability of B, that line straight up and down means given A, okay? So we read it as probability of event B given event A. And one way we can help find conditional probabilities was something called a contingency table or a two-way frequency table, which is a frequency table that contains data from two different categories. Contingency tables and tree triagrams, which we'll see later, can help find conditional probabilities. So here is a contingency table. It has data from two different categories, males and females. And then my inputs are the type of colleges that we, we wanna go to, two-year colleges, four-year college, graduate schools. And so there's two sets of outputs, the male outputs and the female outputs. That's what happens when we have a contingency table. So the table shows students by gender and by type of school in 2005. You pick a student at random. What is the probability that this student is female given they went to graduate school? Okay. So, uh, and even though this is in thousands, we can just use these numbers here because they're all in thousands. So given this uh, given that we know the student is female. So we know, or sorry, given, we want to know the probability they're female, given they went to graduate school. So we know that we're only going to use those two columns or that whole row. So we just take the two numbers and add them together to get my total, which is uh, 13, 3303 divided by the probability that they are female. So that's 1954. And we just take those and divide them to get my probability, which is 0.5959%. Okay. So the reason why we're only looking at these two is because I'm told that they have to have gone to graduate school given they went to graduate school first, okay? So, and what is the probability that the person is just female? Well, now that's something different. Now, we're not talking about just that row or just that, uh, that row right there. Now we're talking about all of the students. So that means that the probability that the student is female Let's move this up a little bit. The probability that the student is female is going to be 2462 plus 5517 plus 1954 over, that's all the females, over everybody. 62 plus 5517 plus 1954 plus all the men. 1866, 4324, and 1349. So when I add these all up, I get 9933 over 17,472, which is after I divide that 0.57, which is 57%. Let's try a uh, I got it problem. Okay, so my got it problem says, oops, 
it says, what is the probability that they go to a four-year school given that they are male? Okay, so now we're only looking at those ones. So the total there is 1866, 4324, and 1349. So that's 7539. And probability they went to a four year school. So that's 4324. So this would be 4324 over 7539. which is uh, 0.57 again. So all these are 57%, which is just a, except for the first one, 59, uh, just a coincidence. Uh, our reasoning part, given the student is enrolled in a four-year college, is it more likely for the student to be male or female? Well, if you look at the table, given that they're in a four-year college, it's much more likely, well, not much more, it's more likely that it's going to be a female because there's more females that go to four-year colleges. Okay, So our contingency table here can really help us when we're finding one thing given another thing has already happened. Okay, So let's look at this using statistics. Okay? Americans recycle increasing amounts through municipal waste collection. The table shows the collection data for 2007. What is the probability that a sample of recycled waste is paper? So that's given it's recycled waste. Okay. So given it's recycled, what's the probability is paper? So the way we write that is probability of recycled given, sorry, the probability that it's paper given it's recycled. Okay, so paper is 45.2 divided by, add all these up. So that's 45.2, 7.2, 3.2, 2.1, gives me 79.4. Divide those two and we get, uh, whoever wrote, the, wrote this textbook, 57 again. Again, just a weird coincidence. Okay. So the correct answer is T, 57%. Uh, for our got it problem, uh, we're going to use the same table from above. So let's um, let's grab this table and move it down a little bit. Okay, so what's the probability that a sample of recycled waste is plastic? So again, the same, the same category. So this would just be uh, 2.1 over 79.4. So now this is not gonna be 57%, divided by uh, 79.4 gives me uh, 3%. 0.026. So, well, we can even say 2.6%. Okay. What is the probability of that a sample of recycled waste is glass? And again, same thing. Glass would be 3.2 over uh, recycled waste, 79.4. So, a little bit higher. And that would be 4%. 0.04. One thing given another. So we can also use a formula to find conditional probability. The formula for any two events, A and B, with P of A not being zero, right? Probability can't be zero because you can't divide by zero. The probability of B given A is the probability of them both together divided by the probability of A. 
So using the formula for conditional probabilities, we can calculate a conditional probabilities from any other probability. Okay, so we can do that here. And again, we could do the same technique that we did in the previous question where um, we could just look at the frequency table and calculate it, but let's try to use the formula. Okay. So utility company asked 50 of its customers whether they pay their bills online or, per ma uh, or by mail. What is the probability that a customer pays their bill online given the customer is mail? So I'm looking for the probability of online given mail. So that's going to be equal to the probability of online and mail divided by the probability of just being mail. Well, that's the probability of online and mail. It would be 12 over, right, the total is 50, 12 over 50, over the probability of just being mail is, whoops, not those two, that's just online. Probability of mail is those two, so that's 20 out of 50 to divide a fraction by a fraction. You multiply by the reciprocal. So we would be 12 over 50 times 50 over 20. Those two cancel. We get 12 over 20, 3 over 5, which is 0.6, And yes, we could use the frequency table right here to just say, okay, what is the probability of ordering online given they are mail would be 12 out of the total number of males, 20. Okay. But we wanted to try a different technique this time. Okay. Our data problem, same thing, let's do it two different ways. Researchers ask shampoo users whether they apply the shampoo directly to the head or indirectly using the hand. I thought about this when I saw this question. I usually put it in my hand and then put it on my head. I don't know. I feel like I use less that way. Uh, what's the probability that a respondent applies the shampoo directly to the head given the respondent is female? So the probability of directly to the head given they are female would be equal to the probability of head and female over the probability that it is a female. Okay, so head and female, that's six out of, oh, they didn't tell us how many people here, so we have uh, 20 plus 30, 50 again. Okay, so six out of 50 divided by the probability of female is 30 out of 50. So that's six times cancel, and we would have uh, one-fifth, which is 20%. Okay. Again, the other way to do this would be 6 out of 30. Given it's female, what's the probability that she puts it directly onto her head? Okay. It follows from that formula that the probability of A and B together, right, we can just multiply both sides by the probability of A, and we get this formula. Okay, so we can use this rule along with the tree diagram to find probabilities of dependent events. Okay, and the trick is making an accurate tree diagram. So here's our situation. A school system compiled the following information from a survey it sent to people who were juniors 10 years earlier. Uh, yeah, so 10 years later, they're, they're asking whether or not they graduated from high school and uh, about their job. So 85% graduated from high school. Of the students who graduated, 90% are happy with their job. The people who did not graduate, 60% are happy with their present jobs. So what's the probability that a person from this survey graduated from high school and is happy with their job? So we want this graduated and happy, okay? So we're gonna have to make some sort of way to, uh, 
you know, display all these different probabilities. And what we can do is we can make a tree diagram. So our first branch here is you had two choices. You graduated or you didn't graduate. So graduated, the question tells me 85%, 85% of these people graduated. So this is 0 0.85, which means that this is 0.15. If 85% graduated, 15% did not graduate. Okay. And then from here, from this first point, you have two choices. You're happy with your job. You're not happy. Same thing down here. You're happy with your job. You're not happy with your job. Okay, let's look at the numbers here. Of the students who graduated, 90% are happy, which means 10% are not. Of the students who did not graduate, 60% are happy, which means 40% are not. Okay, so to find this probability, graduated and happy, this is equal to the probability that they graduated times the probability that they are happy given they graduated. And that is from my formula that I just looked at. So the probability they graduated is 85% times the probability they're happy. Well, that's both of these given that they graduated. So now it's only this one. 0.95. Okay. And when I multiply these both together, I get 0.765. Okay. So the probability that a person graduated from high school in this survey and were happy with their job is 77%. Okay. And then our got a problem is going to use the same thing. What's the probability that a student from the junior class 10 years ago? did not graduate and is happy with her job. So did not graduate, so that would be 0 0.1, whoops, 0.15 and is happy, 0.6. So this random person is gonna be 0 0.09. So there's a 9% chance that, uh, a random student that took this survey didn't graduate high school and is happy with their job. Okay, so that is conditional probability. Section 11-4.